Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we will take a closer look at the extreme overclocking of the new AMD Ryzen 5 CPUs. So actually I was in February, early February, I was in Taiwan in ASUS uh, office to pre-test those AMD Ryzen CPUs and back then we didn't know that Ryzen 5 would only launch now in April. So obviously uh, I couldn't publish the video back then when Ryzen 7 launched. So some of the details which are in the video are already not well, not up to date anymore because some of the Ryzen 7 records are already broken again by higher Ryzen 7 records. Anyway, I hope you have a lot of fun with that video. Um, yeah, actually the video was only made in German, but I put some uh, English voice of me over the video so the English guys can follow this video as well. I hope uh, you have a lot of fun with this video. So let's go. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. As you can see, I'm in Taiwan and this week we will be testing the new AMD Ryzen Zen CPUs here at ASUS ROG branch office. So we will be testing the new Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard and I'm really looking forward and really curious how far we can push those AMD Ryzen CPUs. I already tested the new AMD Ryzen CPUs on air and so far those results look really really promising and I think there is actually a chance that we will be able to break some of the current Intel records and I think this would be the first time in like I don't know maybe like 6 or 10 years that AMD will actually be in front in some of the 2D benchmarks. So I will enjoy this view for a little longer and then we will start with the video and overclocking. So I just got the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard and this is how it looks like. It's actually a really, really nice board. And of course we will take a closer look at this board, but not too much into detail because we will do a separate video about this motherboard where we will go in detail about um, all the features and also air and water overclocking, but that would just be too much for this um, extreme overclocking video. So this is how the board looks like and actually this board, um, it's still an engineering board but it should be very close to retail status. I just got it literally five minutes ago so I'm not familiar with all the specs yet. Uh, but you can see that the board looks actually really really good and I really like the Southbridge design. It's very similar to this latest C270 boards and I really love those designs. Also the VRM cooler looks really really good. I actually have no idea um, how strong this VRM is and what components are exactly on there but I assume those are the same components as on the latest C270 board so it should be really good for OC. Um, I only know those chokes, um, the inductors, they're really strong because they're linear inductors and even under heavy load they are very still very efficient. So that's one thing I can already tell you and something which is really really good. But in general um, the board looks really clean and a very good design. So this is my second board. I already removed most of the unnecessary parts for extreme overclocking. So you can see the Southbridge cooler was removed and also the VRM coolers are already removed. And now I will start uh, with all the preparation for extreme overclocking. And you can see I have a CPU already on there. It's a Ryzen 5 6 core CPU, which we will test now. Um, first thing we want to test is uh, CPU validation, but before that we have to put some uh, Vaseline on the board and uh, we just use some uh, normal Vaseline we got from the store just uh, to insulate the board. Oh, 
So quick update, yesterday we made already some scores with the 6 core, um, the Ryzen 700 or how is it called? Well, what's the name of the 6 core CPU? Is it uh, RGB? Uh, R5? R5? So yesterday we already made some scores with the 6 core Ryzen CPU and we broke uh, already some records, actually the Cinebench R15, 11.5, Geekbench 3 and uh, GPU Pi. So we also made a validation and we hit 5.9 GHz which is really impressive. It might not sound that high compared to Kaby Lake, but if you compare it for example to Broadwell E which is currently at 5.8 GHz, it's actually really impressive. By the way, on the side, I'm currently running GPU Pi 1B for CPU, and yep, actually, that's a new record at 2 minutes, 10 seconds, and 700 milliseconds. This is actually done with an 8 core CPU and 16 threads. It's a multi threaded benchmark, and the CPU is currently running at 5.4 gigahertz. Of course, I will keep uh, trying to improve this score. Yeah, let's see how far we can push this uh, further and actually Elmore on the side is also trying to improve his 8-core eight, eight scores and he is currently running uh, Geekbench 3. The CPU is running what we call full pot, so we can actually fill up the container completely with liquid nitrogen, which makes overclocking extremely easy. You can see the CPU is running at around 100, minus 170 degree pot temperature, which makes it very easy to maintain and also very easy to bench, especially if you compare it to the latest Intel CPUs, for example, Broadwell E. And also, what we, uh, one thing we noticed is that the socket contact with the PGA socket is so much better than with L LGA. We don't have so much uh, socket contact issues, especially when we're running very low temperatures, which makes memory overclocking also a lot easier. While actually memory overclocking is not that easy on Ryzen because the memory um, controller is locked inside the CPU, so we don't have full control on the memory timings, but it's still a uh, very fun platform and um, yeah, very cool to bench, especially if you compare it, for example, with Kaby Lake. It's a lot of trouble to get high memory clocks to run.
So we are done with one full week of AMD Ryzen 7 overclocking here at ASUS Taiwan office. It was a lot of fun and I'm really happy that I was here. It was an amazing week and I'm really happy to say that AMD is back after over 10 years. AMD is finally back in the extreme overclocking scene and we beat some of the current Intel 2D scores which is really really good. And the CPUs have a very good performance when it comes to the price. Really cannot argue with the price performance of the AMD Ryzen CPUs. And I'm also still amazed by the fact that we, will, we were able to push the 8-core CPU with all 8 cores to 5.8 GHz and the 6-core CPU with all 6 cores, 12 threads to 5.9 GHz, almost hit the 6 GHz. That would have been amazing, but it was unfortunately not possible. Also, Cinebench scores were really, really good. And, well, AMD finally made it uh, to beat the 5A20K 6-core CPU. And, unfortunately, single-threading single performance is not that strong of those CPUs yet. I hope that AMD still can improve those CPUs, maybe can manage to push the clocks a little bit higher. Anyway, I have to go to the airport now. So, I hope you had some fun with this video. Put your comments about Ryzen down below and see you soon. So in the end, we managed to break four multi-threading records with the Ryzen 5 compared to the current Intel records. The current Intel records were all done with the Core i7-5820K, which was still Haswell E. Uh, because Broadwell E couldn't clock that high, Broadwell E could not break the current Haswell E records. So we still have to compare Ryzen 5 with Haswell E scores. So we managed to break um, Cinebench R15, R11.5, GPU Pi and Geekbench 3. We could beat all of those four with the Ryzen 5 and the funny thing is that we could beat them with a very low frequency compared to Haswell E. So if you take a look at those scores, most of the scores were done with Haswell E at around 6 GHz and Ryzen 5 um, 6 core CPU beat those records with around 500 to 600 MHz lower, which means that Ryzen 5 is actually, actually much more efficient. Um, yeah, that's actually a pity that uh, the Ryzen 5 CPUs cannot clock that high on aero water cooling because if those CPUs would clock high, let's say like 4.5 GHz on aero water, those CPUs would definitely kick ass. Um, they're still very good when it comes to the uh, price performance. Um, still, I, w I wish that we will see some higher clocking um, Ryzen based CPUs in future, maybe in a year or something. Who knows what AMD is working on. Um, in the end, we also managed to uh, achieve a frequency of 5905 MHz with the Ryzen 5, all with uh, the 6 active cores and 12 threads. So I think that's a quite impressive result for Ryzen. Actually that session was also a lot of fun uh, because Ryzen is completely different uh, than clocking any of the latest Intel CPUs. So that was really refreshing. So I hope you had a lot of fun with this video. If you liked it, thumbs up and I wish you have a good day. See you soon.